This was the mosque at Lambaro after the tsunami. The thing completely collapsed, unfortunately destroying a 17th or 16th or 17th century mimbar, which was elaborately carved and was just matchwood when it after the tsunami. Um, this is what it looked like in uh, June, July 2005. The whole area was still covered in broken trees, branches, house foundations. As you can see here, <coughs> foundations of a house here, bits of clothing, shoes, toys, plastic remains just scattered all over the place and of course the inevitable uh, drowned trees on the shoreline. And remarkably, one or two coconuts did survive the tsunami. The ter terrible loss of life, of course, along this coast. And this is what I would imagine would have happened to a settlement in this same location probably 600 years earlier. The tsunami swept in with uh, horrendous force and took out almost everything within the bay and as it went further along the coast was reaching two or three or four kilometers inland. So the only settlements that did survive were those that were some distance up the Aceh River. <coughs> uh, Post-tsunami uh, remains of a burial ground. There were still a few Batu Aceh lying around in the mud. Another one. <coughs> the gravestones were all just completely lifted up by the waves and dumped some distance away or sucked out to sea. Uh, <clears throat> this was a graveyard which was in 1986 was hidden in the, the undergrowth to the top left of that earlier picture I showed you. Um, in 1998 um, this was still of course pretty well complete but after the tsunami in 2006 there was just uh, one remaining upright stone that's now been knocked down by the waves and this is what it looks like as the tides coming in completely submerged and this is what you find if you go walking in the intertidal zone um, broken gravestones Domestic rubbish here and there, just general devastation all over the place. <clears throat> the uh, Panchu River has cut itself a new channel, reforming through the mud, exposed at low tide. Uh, the beach is also re-establishing itself. Uh, a new mosque now stands where the old one, the pre-2004 mosque stood, and new houses have been built um, in this area, in Lambaro. But <clears throat> you just have to walk a couple of hundred meters off the edge of the road and you'll, you'll find uh, domestic rubbish like this, bits of a Dutch gin bottle, uh, Chinese blue and white wares, even European uh, transfer wares of the late 19th century, mid and late 19th century, um, exposed and then lost and re-exposed again. Uh, this is a little bay where a stream comes into the, it's called Lok Matai, um, <coughs> which is a permanent source of water from the hills behind. It's just one of numerous springs that actually can be found around the edge of the bay there. And uh, as I said, there's not yet any uh, evidence for anything earlier than the 12th or 13th centuries. But um, the site was obviously reoccupied um, pretty continuously after these earlier seismic events and devastations. And the, the name Lambarianujid means the new lamb of the mosque, the new settlement of the mosque, which uh, and now has been um, 
resettled on at least three occasions since the 17th century. But being located where it was, the likelihood is that uh, whatever was there prior to 1390 and 1450 was uh, eclipsed by the rise of the Sultan of Ache, Sultanate of Ache, which was established some time after Chamek influence arrived in the area around about 1470. Uh, the people who established the new sultanate there very quickly uh, incorporated Lamre, Lamre and the Panchu Bay area into their polity. But um, <clears throat> it seems that there was quite an important settlement on the bay continuously for many centuries. Met, but much of it has been swallowed up um, by the sea with rapid subsidence taking place from at least about the, the end of the uh, 19th century. Now, historical sources are mainly, uh, local historical sources are mainly silent about Lamre and Fansur. But uh, in the last five years or so, we, we've discovered at least five pre sultanate uh, settlement sites which are known in the Achevasar district uh, in and around uh, the Bay of Panchu itself, Lambara Nujid, uh, Gampong Pande in Banda Ache, uh, Gampong Jawa in Banda Ache, uh, Nusu as part of Banda Ache, Lamna to the east, and uh, Chotme near Ladong, which is also known as Indrapatra, and of course a site, uh, a major early Islamic site uh, for which we have carbon dating from the mid 13th century onwards on, located on the Ujung Bate Kapal uh, headland at Lamre. Now all these places are uh, subject to ongoing uh, subsistence. One footnote on the Lamre site, unfortunately the uh, Cultural Agency for Aceh Bazaar has decided that it will be turned into a golf course. So that will be the end of that. <coughs> so the, my reasons for equating Panchu with Fansur are one, the name Panchu or Fansur uh, is a coastal settlement site which actually can be equated to Fansur, uh, now known as Lambara Nujid. And the fact that Long uh, Lok Panchu equates pretty well with historical descriptions of Fansur. The fact that Lok Panchu is geographically strategically positioned at the western tip of Achibasar and a relatively short distance away from Lamre on the eastern end of the same coast. <coughs> uh, the fact that Panchu and the adjoining coastline is undergoing uh, sinkage, submersion, and the fact that there has also been a fair amount of seismic impact in this region over the centuries. Um, Panchu is within walking distance of Lamre, even considering that at once, one time there were three large estuaries of the Krung Ache between what is now uh, Lok Panchu and the Krung Raya. But if one accepts that the harbour of Panchu or Fansur was an entropo and not necessarily the original source of camphor, then, to my mind anyway, uh, we have the, uh, we've resolved the issue that, that there were indeed, as Tibbets suggested, there were two separate entities. One was Fansur and the other was uh, Barus. In fact, there was a lot going on here prior to the establishment of the Sultanate. Um, 1990, a Tamil stele was discovered in the grounds of a mosque in Nesu in Banda Aceh. Unfortunately, it had been used as uh, a stone upon which everybody washed their feet before going into the wash, uh, in, into the mosque, and the over the years. Because of the nature of the soft stone, sandstone, the writing on it had been largely abraded, so it wasn't possible to get terribly much from the uh, 
inscription itself, except that um, it was put up by a group of supposedly Tamil uh, merchants who were interested in gold working. There's a mention of a, what seems to be a touchstone in the inscription. This has been uh, transposed by a, a, a Tamil scholar, Subaralayu, and is published in uh, a, a couple of the books on uh, Baros. And as I mentioned earlier, we, ha we, ha we now have identified pre-Sultanate settlement sites which existed at Lamre, Ladong, Chotme, Lamna, Kampong Pande, Kampong Jawa, Nusu, and Panchu. So <clears throat> I think on the basis of that, and the amount of imported uh, ceramics, although we haven't found anything earlier than the 12th, 13th century, there was quite a lot going on up there uh, at that particular period. And I should have mentioned, of course, also the Tanjore inscription which dates from the equivalent of 1025 of our common era, in which the name uh, Illamuri Desham is mentioned, Lamri, Lamuri. So the Tamils certainly knew of it uh, by the beginning of the 11th century. Now, the one other factor in making a decision about uh, Fansur uh, and its equation with uh, Barus is the fact that the first textual equation of Fansur with Barus and sailing directions for people going directly to Fansur only appear in the early mid 16th century, which is a century or more after Fansur actually disappeared, as far as we know. And this was also after the establishment, or about the time of the establishment of the uh, Sultanate of Aceh. <clears throat> so these are all events which may have allowed for an error to creep into the textual material and the assumption that both harbours were in fact one and the same. So we can say that the area in and around the Bay of Panchu has been inhabited since at least the 13th, 12th or 13th centuries, possibly earlier. But uh, due to major seismic events, earthquakes and tsunamis, settlements that existed there uh, may have been destroyed in 1390 and again in 1450. And so I would submit that the now submerged Bay of Panchu is strategically a far better candidate for the, the location of Fansur than is Barush, which is some 500 kilometers to the southeast. <clears throat> so if, if Fansur is regarded as an entrepot rather than the primary source of the camphor, which was of a valuable commodity uh, to the Arabs of the 9th century, then pretty well all the criteria relating to its uh, location are now fulfilled. Barus became confused with Fansur due to inaccuracies in early mid 16th century texts and uh, when mariners were uh, direct, directed directly to the source of camphor which was further down the west coast. <coughs> And Fansur, along with Lamri, were both convenient harbours for people coming across the Indian Ocean or departing to the west due to their strategic positions at the northwest tip of Aceh. As Panchu is only some 15 kilometres west of Kota Alam and the locations on the Aceh River where the Sultan arose after about 1470, <coughs> and it were the the people who then lived there were mainly new post seismic event populations. It's possible that the location of Fanso was forgotten, but Ache would appear to be the heir to an an earlier strategically locate, located harbor and and entrepot. So uh, the, these are my reasons, I think, for 
um, deciding that Panchu Bay was in fact the site of ancient Fansur. Uh, we have had a brief <coughs> program of archaeological work in the Panchu Bay area, assisted by the Earth Observatory of Singapore and the uh, Institute of Southeast Asian Studies. Um, but much more work remains to be done to either prove or disprove the hypothesis. Uh, the answer may well be in underwater research, which may ultimately reveal whether the hypothesis is correct and hopefully resolve the question of the location of ancient Fansor. If we have 9th, 10th century materials from underwater sites, then I think that helps to prove the point. We certainly have similar material from shipwrecks elsewhere in Indonesia. So uh, this is a general view from the bay, looking towards the, the, the volcano Sulua, which is east of Banda Aceh, and how it looks in the late afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for your patience and attention. <laughs> Ah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Edwards McKinnon. Of course, Aceh is an extremely significant area for early Southeast Asian history. The references to it go back as far as 2,000 years in early Ptolemaic sources from uh, Alexandria and Egypt, um, Barusai, as it was called then. And of course, it's significant for all kinds of connections with the areas of the, uh, the Indian Ocean over a period of 2,000 years. And almost no archaeology has ever been done there because Aceh has always been protesting against external control. So it's been impossible until the tsunami to, to at least get in and at least begin to do some preliminary surveys. And hopefully in the near future, some techniques will be developed to both work on land and possibly get devolved some of the, the secrets that no doubt lie underneath the shallow waters just off the coast.